Hello, Jared. Thank you for having me. Ahmed, good morning and good evening uh, to you in uh, Australia. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's 9 p.m. over here. We're both recording from uh, more branded studios than last time we uh, we talked. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, as you do things, your capabilities and the way you take your, um, your approach to things and also the learning curve, even with having videos. Remember our first videos were a bit shaky. Yeah, you started with a smaller printer as well, and you've launched a larger printer. To give people context who are listening, you're the CEO and founder of Loy10, a company in Australia seeking to automate construction with printed concrete technologies. Uh, and there are a couple of things that make your printer different from some of the other gantry systems. Uh, could we start with that? That is true. Um, so basically, our, our, our background is mostly robotics. And, uh, you know, we've been, we've all had experience with the team at Newton. And by the way, with regards to the name, it's uh, the name of a star and an extra planet. That is not very far, it's just 12 flight years away. So here you can see we have a lot of faith in uh, human ingenuity and science that at some point we'll be cracking space travel. Um, so we, we were all colleagues and, um, most of us from our backgrounds are in electronics, uh, aerospace engineering, and automotive engineering, in my case, from a master's degree. Um, we've been teaching robotics together. And, um, we, we saw a lot of folks kind of try to repurpose articulated robotic arm. This six axis ones, you know, without mentioning specific um, brands. Um, There's too many to mention. <laughs> There's too many to mention, that's true. Um, and it's been used extensively in uh, many uh, industries, whether it's food, uh, automotive, uh, pharmaceutical. And we sort of seen a lot of uh, folks kind of uh, just, you know, uh, repurpose those. And, you know, like the smallest of those, uh, when you talk about weight, they're in the you're in the vicinity of one to three to four to six tons in some, in some um, instances. Um, and with construction, our philosophy is that, uh, first of all, this is an industry that is 95% of operating, 95% uh, of the operators are small businesses. And when you come with one, size one solution or uh, you know you come up with a very regressive system you know that tax people too much to start with that just makes the uh this technology become a trend rather than and i can tell you right now from the uh, well the, uh, what, what we hear from folks who call us and the interest, especially among millennials, it's more than a trend. It's not a trend. It's, uh, it's here to stay. As you see in the construction industry, before we started this, well, we know how to, like, personally, you can take any teach pattern. Many of the robotic arms out there, and I know I can program it to be picked. But to get into an industry, you know, you need a proper business model. You need to think, you know, things through, and, uh, Basically, we thought that since there is that kind, even in the industry, we, we were expecting, sorry, I digress a lot, but we were expecting that we will face some sort of, if you will, resistance or reluctance. But what we're saying um, is we've been watching folks for a while uh, while we were doing our thing, which is, you know, anyone can operate a robot, but it's the material, structural integrity, there is a science to this. And we saw that incremental acquiescence. The reluctance you expected was the reluctance from... Well, uh, because it's an industry that has been um, under-automated for a long time. Yeah. So, and I'm, because of my profession and my training uh, as an engineer, 
automation, and robotics, and you know, particularly, uh, we, we, we saw like many other industries that uh, actually spark. And I hope to those are funny after this. You get the same quality of that Twix bar every time you buy it, whether you're in Australia, in Malaysia, in Central Africa, or in the United States. You get the same Twix bar. Why we do have we do have that? We know that automation, uh, you know, uh, the, level, the level of automation that they have in their factories. Uh, the processes in general, the quality controls. Um, by the way, the Twix bar is not the most significant purchase any of us is going to do in their life, but it has all these quality assurance and safeguards in place. However, with the most significant purchase of your life or anyone's life, uh, you, you have to, it, it's a lottery. <laughs> it's a lottery. And, 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 and that's that's the issue that uh, what we're facing. Um, if you allow me for a second, I'm just gonna. Uh, uh, I, I think the uh, screen share is enabled. Uh, that's what you'd like to do. No, no. One of my electrical sockets uh, went uh, went out because uh, I'm putting, if you will. Yeah. Okay. I'll put it on a timer. Uh, that, that's another problem when you over automate your office. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, apologies for that. No worries. Um, now, having said that, um, from there, we, we thought about the, the issue that with these, all these uh, robots that you have in the border preset, and you can spend and put major efforts to make them mobile, but we've seen some do. But then that is not, uh, you are transferring the cost of that down to the small business owner who use a lot of big layers, who barely crunch his numbers to, to make a living out building people, uh, you know, houses for folks. Um, and that's when we decided like, okay, we can come up with something that is a headline. That is technically an upward big. Uh, at the same time, make sure that the cost of that system is not off-putting, so that people at least give it a go. Uh, and uh, we know we are very early in this industry. It would have been way much cheaper to repurpose, you know, one of those gantries, uh, you know, from the harbor or the port, and make the biggest ever gantry, whatever. And um, we know how to do that. It's uh, it's a cakewalk. I can tell you that much. However, that is then we will be actually propagating regress in robotics for this particular technology, and that is not helpful. When you do that, um, and you focus on to to if you were to roll it out very quickly, uh, you might achieve some gains initially. But on the long term, uh, people get frustrated. You know, um, trust me. We sometimes the print is going well. You know, so we're talking. It didn't take us to set up too long, and then something happened to the pump for ten minutes. You can see the frustration in people's faces. Yeah, I've seen that and many times. I will not charge in them so much as many. You know, so that's why you can find it. The, basically, we're just making this technology more palatable. If you will. Or an industry where folks really just don't trust computers. I remember a gentleman came to me and said, okay, is, is, is it computers? Do I have to study computers to do this? I was like, no, okay, just use your uh, mobile phone device. And uh, then, then uh, you know, it, it went well from there. He's been a bricklayer for 30 odd years. And he brought his son. He's like, okay, listen, my son is like good at school, and I don't want him to have the same uh, skeletal issues that I have. They teach him this. Uh, and so that's, and, and I think we are uh, pioneering in that sense. Because we looked at an industry, we, we know the robots, we understand the technology, the know how, and the means to do that are there. Um, 
And we worked, we took our time at Lewton to make sure that uh, the quality of the print, whatever the longitude or latitude is, because it's, it's chemistry, it's, uh, it's, there is an exact science to that. So that to kind of help this industry go forward, when we see more people accepted, and we appreciate everyone out there who's, uh, who's in, in the run with us, I'm pushing it a little bit further rather than because it's too early for any of us to declare wins or you know, dominance or whatever. Um, you know, this, this takes me back to a time when you know, folks in boxing, you know, the guy who, who always shows off the moves and stuff, and it gets not pretty much fast in the, you know, in the ring. Yeah, it's still training time before the fight, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, the, the, the most free guys, you know, they're, they're the sign of it. You don't, uh, you don't know much about what, what they're doing. Um, that was a great answer. I appreciate you uh, were long winded. We have the time, so it's good to give a thorough answer. I appreciate that. So, there's a lot of stuff to unpack there. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is you, there were, it, you mentioned some groups might have reluctance or you anticipated more reluctance in some areas. The areas that I could imagine reluctance is in the insurance companies, the permitting companies, uh, the neighbors of who might live near the houses or the laborers on the job site who will be working to build the homes. Where were you expecting the reluctance? Oh, we were expecting it from um, all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. People fear what they don't know. Uh, you know, and, and, and uh, let, let me put it, many of the reluctance could be due to reasons that are not uh, reasonable. Um, it looks like toothpaste. Someone could ruin it for you that easy. It looks like toothpaste. It's going to cost a lot to finish it. How about the finish? Um, we heard it all, I think. I think. Um, and many of the people actually don't believe it. Don't believe that this happened. Therefore, at, at Lincoln, we were thankful um, to everyone who, who decided to become a tip of the screen, especially in a big economic, um, you know, first world country like the United States. Um, we mentioned our friends in August, for example, uh, and a couple of other companies, I can't recall all of them right now, but I think who've done that, they took the risk, that makes it easier for others. Um, because once, once you show it that you can do this in a couple of days, really, then, uh, yeah, it, it makes sense. We can share a video rather than try to explain it, explain the details of the video. Which print was in a couple of days? Cause none of the Alquist prints were in a couple of days. I'm not showing about Alquist in particular. I'm not saying about Alquist in particular. But they did that uh, owner occupied. They brought a family to the house. I'm not sure that the family's in the house yet. They do the move in ceremonies, and I've been to the, I go to the move in ceremonies, but the person doesn't move in right then. Uh, there's some interesting, I haven't, I'm not positive that anybody owner occupied has moved into a printed house yet, actually. Okay. okay. It's kind of strange. Well, um, uh, well, I tell you what. Um, so I, I'm not aware of the uh, of that uh, what you just mentioned that no one uh, but, but I took things at face value. There's a lot of early um, announcements, like companies say we're going to print or we're printing 200 homes, 100 homes. Uh, I and it, it's 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 a it's, it's a bit fervor for the rest of us. Let me put it that way. Um, like we can be pedantic about the details of what each company did or did not. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I know that this is, we're in the infancy of this. So, Absolutely. therefore, there are a lot of things. Uh, but surprisingly, we didn't find a lot of work. We found that we hit a perfect storm. And many folks are frustrated about how your most significant purchase in a lifetime, with a man or woman, It's a lot. It's up to you and who you choose to, you know, do that. You know? Especially if you're at the lower 
end of this financial spectrum. And you don't want to talk the nonsense most of the time. So that's 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 where sort of um, the reluctance we were expecting. But we found that insurance companies are happy to jump into this. Um, they can announce that the solution walls, uh, that uh, all the walls that our clients built, uh, we've uh, done all the testing, all the due diligence, and uh, we got the insurance company because in Australia, for example, we had seven years warranty from the builder for uh, for everything in your house. And uh, we agree for that. Um, we show the case that's stronger, better, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, people in the in the market, uh, the builders, these small business owners, sometimes you're hosting. Imagine this with me. We have a building company and we don't have you know, you have you depend on many trades most of the time. So sometimes if a crew doesn't want to show up in multiple of your locations, you're gonna pay the late fees. Yeah. However, um, and, and, and they're human beings, they can only do so much. So that that, that solves another problem. If yeah, I'm definitely. Solving, definitely. Go, go, go ahead. There is a bigger, there is a bigger trend. See, uh, folks in your age or my age or any of our colleagues, no one wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to be uh, doing manual construction for the rest of the night. It's a gig most of the time. People are aspiring for something there. Uh, if you can have a, a, a job, you know, such as Uber Eats, that is less taxing on your body, you don't have to be rocket scientists to do that. But also, you don't have to, how do you say, uh, end up with the body aches and you know, deal with uh, there is a job today, there is no job tomorrow. Yeah, it's less physically taxing, certainly. And more reliable, like you said, uh, construction, a lot of small businesses, and it's always a project to project basis. So it's not a permanent 20 year job. You can finish the building. And then unless a new building is complete, there's uh, and there's always more buildings to be made, but it's not a long term contract. There's no pension. At the end of it, if, even if you wanted to take it as a career, there's no pension. So, um, so that the product that you developed, the you mentioned uh you wanted to build it from scratch and because your academic experience and your team, uh, you were, had the confidence to build a whole system from scratch to make well, it I optimized. Mean, we, uh, the team we have, we've had experience building. Um, so in Australia, the academia is very much involved with the industry. Uh, our team, we built the printers before for metal, Problem for, for other things, mechanisms. Uh, and uh, so we, we knew why we were building those at the time, because whatever was in the market was not fulfilled. Why? For that particular industry. What is not purpose? Repurposing something is different from building something for a purpose. Yeah, definitely. What are the primary reasons, the things that you wanted it to be better at? Oh, well, first, agility. Lightness, you don't need a three ton articulated robotic arm that is designed to handle to give you six degrees uh, of freedom or six axis, seven axis, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to print concrete with it. A robot that is designed or, uh, you know, to you need that kind of manipulation in different industries, but with a cold heat system, like concrete or more, you know, uh, we use cold feed. There is no heater at the end. You, know, you can't yeah, have over always extruded perpendicular to the print bed. Yeah, like, yeah, like, you, you can't have the overhangs without using uh, or pumping the whole thing with accelerants and, you know, have less structural capacity. So what's the point? You know, why, why add the, it's just like when I sell you a car and tell you, hey, uh, it has a Bluetooth and it has a small fan of the steering wheel that can do that. 
It's why care about these things when you need, you know, when 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 all the automotive pioneers sorry, then you can care about all the gadgets. These things can come later. To come later. But first, you need to build the engine. Uh, we need to make sure that it's economical uh, to, to the economic feasibility for the end user. So let's so, talk about um, more differences. Okay, so we decided to make it light. Uh, our smallest printer is 125 kilograms. We can put it in the in a in 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 pickup, take it, and uh, do walls, do retaining walls, do whatever. What size is that? It's one meter by one meter, but we left one uh, one, 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 one axis, just like me and again, please, to be easy. And we realize we don't all the time need necessarily, uh, especially if you're in you will disaster alleviation efforts. You, you can't have a, a level ground all the time. Yeah. So what, what, what can you do? Well, we know about something called sensor fusion for some sensors. And yeah, you got the same accuracy. So you can have a good print. And we showed a video, I think, in early on that you don't need this necessarily. Um, the other thing is, when we say mobility, means we need it to um, come to size that it can be transportable, that people don't have to worry about putting it on or putting it off, adding more labor and more cost and more machinery just to handle the printer. We find that to be the key for many things uh, in life, mobility. So when you take that mobility and uh, away, uh, and also mobility doesn't have to be achieved by, you know, making your uh, printer, uh, you know, uh, into a tank that goes and you know, try to focus a boom pump for none of it. All you need to do is make it just like a pocket. And then that, 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 that's that's uh, the size of the forklift. It, it's mobile. It, it does the job. And it's not very expensive to move around. And a mixer pump system and a generator. But so the first house you printed, was that with the one meter by one meter printer? That, yeah, that's true. The cool. First house so we... that's, how did you make that work with, because you print the demo house was, uh, I don't know, at least 30 square meters, perhaps 20 square meters. About 37 square 37. meters or something, 36, yeah, something like that. That's pretty big. So how did you print something so big from a one square meter machine? Well, because we could go, we made it like a, a mobile factory, as I said, and go, uh, and we showed how we printed multiple uh, elements at the same time. And that was a testament, actually, it's not was about, it was not really about the machine so much. It was more about our material knowledge and promise, what we can achieve with that. Uh, because with a good machine or a nice robot, you have a robot. Uh, you can put a, a heated, you know, a nozzle and a bed, and you can have a bigger, the biggest plastic printer ever, you know? Uh, but to use a structural material, uh, we, we, we thought that was, uh, we got done a lot of testing, show the material, what it can understand, Etc. Um, and also just to get our game more, you know, the layer quality, the shapes, the all, all this stuff. Definitely. With that structural capacity, without adding so many accelerators. But to get started, we were used to get like one, uh, one meter twenty, one twenty uh, centimeters in, in in about five hours up high. Now we can get to two. And two and a half meters in one go. Uh, like we will show or share with you our uh, first phase of our house uh, printed for, uh, for the indigenous uh, uh, corporation in central Australia. So that print uh, is that using the same smaller printer or is that using uh, the bigger format? Uh, well, we're using the bigger printer. So this time there is no cold jointing. Although, you know, for folks who have cold jointing issues, you know, I'd, I'd advise them not to buy on any bridge. <laughs> you know, not it's not all that. On bridges, you know, you can't, you can't buy on, on many bridges if you don't know. Uh, but I, I get it. It's, uh, 
Sometimes people get caught on the moment, they don't understand the structural stuff, and they talk, you know, they want to show a point. But if you don't, um, well, don't think there's no problem with it. There are methods and so straightforward ways to do it. It's illegal uh, in the United what? States. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah you can't have cold joints and construction, uh, concrete, cured concrete, uncured concrete, uh, not to code, even if it's non-structural. Okay, okay. well, um, maybe that's for residential, I say. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Because, as I told you, cold jointing is a practice. So there, there is a lot of, there are ways to join things in cold jointing. Yeah, you problems. need a dual bond epoxy. It's very expensive. Uh, that could be the case. Is there a better uh, solution? Uh, there are better solutions. Uh, you know, you could uh, do it mechanically as well. Mechanically uh, but, join them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, 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 the point we I'm trying to get to here, Jeff, is we went from that cold jointing thing, exercise that you did, to um, but uh, and by the way, it's not cured when we call on it. It's not totally cured. When you put two parts together and you catch them in a certain way, not gonna get into details. There might be a trade secret for all I know. Um, but it's 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 not cured. You know? No concrete ever cures after 24 hours. It's it's cu it's cured enough or strong enough has every strength. Well, if it's not monolithic, it's a cold joint. There's no in between. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> I, I like to have that one. You know, um, well, as as we go, we we worked on our mixture. That's what Especially we since you're talking about printing higher and higher in one day, two meters. Uh, it's not really a problem at that point. Yes. Yes. Um, but. We, we took our time to get there without affecting the structural capacity of the mix. Uh, we just making sure that uh, when you tune your parameters, it's a very parametric research problem. You know? So we worked it in our own uh, pace, and now we know we can we can put something for folks out there. And then maybe in the coming days, you might hear us signing licensing deals with folks obviously in in your home country and in other places. What was um, the what was a challenge that you didn't expect assembling the first smaller printer with your team? Uh, it was a cakewalk to be honest. Like it didn't <laughs> because we did just it's a three axis printer. It's not much for us. Uh, and the material was easy too? No, the material research was actually the real thing. To, 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 to adjust the materials. And that's why we took our time. We took our time. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, you can have a high cement content mixture. You realize that early on. Yeah. It gives you nice layers. And, uh, but you need to work the economics of this. Because you're trying to convince a reluctant, at least in our view at the time, industry. To adopt something that will make it more economically feasible. Because if it's just an exotic way of building, yeah, maybe it's not for everyone. There, there is no business case there. So that's, 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 uh, that's, uh, 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 uh. cool. So then from the smaller model, which you mentioned is on tracks, when you built the larger system, did you just scale everything up by 12 or were there other adjustments you needed to make? Well, of course, there's a lot of adjustments, you know, down to, you need to know the actual frequency of your system, you know, especially um, the wind loading. Uh, it, it's just a, you know, an old fashioned mechanical engineering design problem. And we call it the uh, know how that you can turn it on. And of course, there was a new learning curve in you know, the system that you wanted to act in a certain manner. Um, and as you can see, we have a crane. There are plenty of cranes out there for our bigger system. Uh, but why they cannot be repurposed into a 3D printer most of the time? There are a couple of patents that we know on patent applications, at least we know of. People tried that. Uh, 
This is a difference. It's not a surrender to the robot. And by the way, I'll tell you something. The Herschel video. That is not 3D concrete printing. That's around the earth 3D printing. You know? uh, it's a, it's a, there is a huge difference there. Yeah, I heard that argument. And I think I agree with it because it has the tamping system. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, that's around the earth. It's, a, it's one of the best systems out there that you can use. Since some random uh, walls and uh, amazing to call. The other very so, compelling argument that it's not 3D printed is that there's no STL file or G code. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, it's it's a cylindrical, cylindrical robots are the easiest to make, yeah. but they have their limitations as well. Um, 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 it just reminds me of uh, a gentleman you know, who had a cylindrical robot that he was uh, uh, trolling the whole industry about gantries and stuff. As, I mean, it's a trivial discussion. I like the guy, um, I like what he did. Because they push this for, for the rest of us forward. But this is bigger than a system. This is bigger than. Um, well, we have the potential to change people's lives. Um, it's 100, you know, four years ago. Only a dwelling or building your own house was not really a big problem. Only reading history. It's not really that big of a deal like it is for us right now. And we are ugly doing technologies like this to this industry. Uh, I'm sorry, I digress. You know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go back to the question that, uh, that I digress from, but I thought this is a, um, a good part. We will get to a point, I believe, that you are having a house, a good looking house, each technology will, um, you know, will become a right, a human right. There's plenty of plant, plant. There's uh, plenty of materials that we can use without hurting the planet. Uh, and the technology is here. So uh, we don't have to go chop a lot of trees just to build houses and uh, then use some chemicals to fight rot and fungi and all these things. We don't have, we, we can really rethink how the, this basic thing, the basic human life, and now folks are literally enslaved to, you know, endless debts, uh, or it's a dream. Why should it be a dream? Why should it be a problem? So I think, uh, I believe in something called economic opportunity. Uh, I believe that technology can provide that kind of economic opportunity. Uh, this new technology will bring a lot of new players to the game of construction. Will give us, you know, will help us, you know, at least use what many great architects have concocted, you know, in their drawing. You know, there are many great designs that never saw the light you know, because of uh, the cost or the methods or whatever. Now, any architect can call and say, hey, I have this idea. I think we can do it this way. So it becomes a more of a multidisciplinary um, action groups or entities that, you know, it's not just a building company. They're looking, you know, like in the old Sears book. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but there used to be this house kits in the 1920s. You know, the buyer of the wooden house kit and stuff, uh, and then just assemble it, just like similar to what IKEA does, but with a whole house. Uh, now, now you can have that freedom to live how you need, you know, you want an uh, above the ground jacuzzi or uh, bathtub or uh, under the ground bathtub or above the ground swimming pool. Or a swimming pool that feels like a beach with all kind of. I don't know about a stomach. swimming pool. Concrete doesn't have any strength and tension, so I think it's impossible to build a three D printed swimming pool right now. But we're in the thought experiment. It sounds like of the no, future no, possibility. It doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be concrete. Sure. And this glass and other stuff, you know, like. Uh, so we're in a thought experiment now. What happens in the future uh, when? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna agree with you that concrete is weak on tension. Period. Because we built a water tank. Outside, 
Um, With what reinforcement? Um, well, it's, uh, it was reinforced with bigger bars and it was sealed, you know, it has to pass the uh, hydrostatic test. Uh, that we, it was a different learning curve. Sure. Well, let's put a pin in the, in the question I asked earlier. I'll circle back to that question. I like the topic you just brought up a lot. So you're talking about the future. You're talking about how this technology at scale is going to change a lot of things uh, and make a design a more available in a, from a cost perspective, probably. You didn't say that directly, but I think that's what you mean. Something that's uh, the economic opportunity will be there for people to get brand new, very strong custom homes. Uh, for very cost effectively. Now, in that scenario, when material developments are achieved, and let's say it's completely yes. sustainable, uh, what? How does that change the world? So, what that happens with home values? Yeah, that is that is the freedom, the freedom of how you want to build your house as well. Is a I'm house sure. an investment if the cost of creating one goes down so much? Well, I can tell you, having cardboard and timber. Um, you know, uh, as, as an investment in how the, the whole market doesn't make sense to me personally, right? Um, and it's been used, a lot of house builds or rooms or whatever, as um, an economic instrument. Mm -hmm. right? They create jobs for the sake of creating jobs. Creating money. More, more money for who, you know? It's well, for the, that's for how the they issue dollars. In America, at least, when they issue a new mortgage, the person puts 20% down and then the 80%, the rest of the money to pay for the building is pulled out of thin air. So that's new can, money on the books. I can tell you something. Uh, we came to a realization earlier that the prices of residential dwellings, in particular in certain economic facilities has nothing to do with supply of new houses, with methods of whatever, it has to do with three, four layered ecosystems that makes things very expensive. It's a big giant. I think so, the supply matters too. Supply matters to a certain extent and makes it feasible for the poor guy down the line who builds the house. That's where, uh, you know, when you give up the, oh, technology, I mean, sorry. Um, yeah, but when you talk about specific locations like Sydney, it's not about supply, it's about the land supply, not the house supply, right? Yeah, there's that. Um, the, 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 the price of the land, but also the supply can solve the problem to a certain extent. Uh, the prices of houses in certain facilities, especially when it's a, an investment instrument. And folks put their money into that. Yeah. If you're coming up with a new technology or whatever, it might not really be relevant, all that relevant to how that translates to the price. And we know that very well because we know we can build a house for a certain amount of money. And we know before we even build the house, what the <laughs> brokers came up with, like what kind of price that the, the bidding started at. Oh, um, okay. So obviously you have no control of that. Because I can build your house cheaper and stronger. I give you all these freedoms to do whatever you want. Also, let us not jump ahead of ourselves. You know? I think I will remember. First of all, there are not many architects or many operators. This, this industry, this community, technology, uh, in my opinion, we need another thousand or two thousand startups or companies to adopt this before we can start talking about affecting the price, affecting this, affecting that. Well, right now is very sensational. Uh, and We're at 307 right now, according to my count. Yeah, and, and most of them, how many of them are university groups? Actually, that's a good number. We have a, we have a similar we have a similar list, but how many of them? are just research and university groups. None. Oh, okay. That's a different list. And then I have a different list for materials companies and I have a different list for uh, architects. So it's very separated, but uh, there's a lot of construction automation firms now. That's, that's very 
Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's, very, uh, that's very good. But still, that number is this way. When you compare it to the size of the construction, uh, the, the construction industry, and um, the, 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 the way where also the, where is the, the distribution of these companies, uh, the geographical vicinity, I assume most of them are in developed economies. Is that right? There's a mix, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, I would say most of them are in developed economies, and that is that is where uh, um, it's very interesting, very very actually exciting to hear that number. Because personally, I'd like to see more, and I'd like to see this to become just a normal occurrence. Okay, I have my house too. Well, people are still waiting for it to become cost effective. It does. It shouldn't be in a developing economy until it's something that's really making people money or making. Uh, no, something cost effective right now, and people need data to be able to say that. So people saying that it's more cost effective now are speculating based off what they think, based on the numbers on paper. But construction never happens the way it looks on paper. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But uh, with the cost question, because I can see we are focusing on the issue of the cost. It is the predominant issue. Uh, 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 um, right now, we have to be honest. Uh, 3D printing just goes the words. I've seen uh, our colleagues in New York, SQ4D, have done a uh, footing, uh, have done the curvature for the, uh, for the frame uh, for, for a slab. 3D printed that as well. Uh, but predominantly, we tackle one part of the building, which is the most visible one. And you see bones of the house up, it feels like the house is built. Now, so that's a huge saving in the cost. And more importantly, the time. When we say the cost- Compared to stick building, it's not really that big of a, especially because it's such a cement use, you're not saving money on the cost. And the time, if you have a very fast crew, your uh, stick building crew will be faster. How, how much does the cement? Uh, I can see you, 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 you're very opinionated about this. But my question is how much does it, um, how, how much does the cement per cubic meter cost in the USA? A 3D printed concrete uh, typically would cost $300 to $600 a ton, which is like 1.2 yards, which is like about a meter or so, I think. Okay, which, which, which company are you talking about? Because that number is way, way above what we deal with. Uh, and trust me, for, for in our case, we're dealing even with, we're mixing at a certain place where we have to pay a premium, and we're not even nowhere close to that number. That is way too high. So Yeah, but it, there's a lot of costs, like the silo mixer pump system, the generator. Uh, that, is, that is a one-time cost. That's the one-time cost that you make in the beginning. That's the usually it's that equipment is. rented. Usually that equipment's rented instead of owned almost every time. But the uh, the material. Oh, okay, cost. If you know someone who rents these things, let me like, give me his number. You know, I don't know anyone rents stuff here. So for, for us, we have to buy the the uh, pumping systems and the, the attaching system. Mm -hmm. But my point is, a cubic meter, it shouldn't be. Uh, maybe that's a particular company you're talking about. But in general, I can assure you, uh, I mean, even if you're using the high cement, cement content, it shouldn't get to that price. They don't uh, rent the mixer pump. They rent a silo and a generator and a uh, forklift. Then they cannot put the price of that. They cannot put the price of that. No, they don't put that in the material cost. That's on top of the material cost. Yeah, okay. So the material cost, I disagree significantly. For the following reasons. Uh, we've done a test ourselves. So we brought a wall made of this block, and it was supposed to be, oh, we call it cinder blocks. Until a project is finished, though, with a residential certificate of occupancy, we're still speculating. But, but it, it depends, but we cannot really relate it to projects for the following reason. Each, each house or each project's requirements are different. Uh, it depends to 
there. There is customization there. Well, I'm talking in general. Let's talk about this. Uh, how do we make an expert? We brought, I'm, I'm sharing with you. Brought a wall, we made the wall traditional way. We know how much it weighs, about well, four tons. Of all the parts you mentioned of the house, the wall is the cheapest part. The roof is more expensive, the plumbing is more expensive, the electrical is more expensive, the slab is more uh, expensive. Uh, here's the thing that, uh, 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 that I see the reluctance in many of the camp who still argue as if the cost is a problem. Because personally, I'll be honest with you, I don't think the cost uh, of 3D printing is a problem. I think it's been resolved. It's been figured out. And um, as I told you, we were embarking on signing deals with our own recipe. Uh, in, in, in multiple uh, locations. But it's speculation, especially when we're talking about a completed house. So we have to build the house first and then see the numbers. I'm not talking about a house. I'm talking about, um, you see, we'll, it, 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 we'll be going in a circle. It's the house or the material or the design or the, I'm telling you what we've done. Okay, let's move um, on. What we've, done, what we've done is we know how much a cubic meter costs, you know, and it could go as low as $112, right? Yes. 3D concrete printing. The printable concrete. We know we can get there. We know we can get it lower as well. Um, and at that price, it's it's nominal, you know, compared to, uh, because most of the time, even you don't need the aggregates, it's smaller. We know where you use aggregates sometimes. That's a whole different structural and technical debate that is so easy to um, to quash uh, if you know structural engineering or the ABC of it. Now, going forward from there, we know also you can a wall. There is something, there is a trend in 3D printing. Maybe because we're too early, we always see these kind of prints in not confined um, laboratories not directly in the mainstream construction companies, which is topology optimization, where you can literally reduce the amount of material you're building a wall with to be a even structural, a load-bearing one. Uh, you're not allowed to have any load-bearing printed walls, unfortunately. And even, I mean, you're friends with Stefan Mansour. I just had him on the podcast. Even in his latest version with JG80 of the ISO ASTM code, they aren't using any structural 3D printed concrete and all the structural integrities in the vertical loads. So it's a. Uh, by the way, I'm off. part of that and I'm, I'm very active in that, uh, that uh, com the committee. Uh, and I would like for me to thank Stefan for all the. Uh, I mean, he had an impossible uh, task because he would want all of the, the companies that are competing too early to share a lot of the. Now, how about, about uh, he looked through? So that was uh, the thank you, Stefan, for that. Um, now, and a never ending task because innovation never ends. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But, but it was a tough one, and I think it was important. That someone had to do it. Someone had so, to do it. what about the structural? There's still no now, structural systems that can be printed. Well, well um, I know we can do um, the following the yeah. structural. Beams can be built within the wall. We can, but uh, the topology well. optimization doesn't take come into effect until there's a structural calculation done on the wall. Even even without the topology optimization, at this stage, we know for a fact that well, we, we did the wall and then we compared it and we did the testing as well. You know, um, on, on these wall uh, segments, um, that a simple triangle in the middle. It gave us, you know, the, 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 the same one and, and how much we reduced. So a wall that was supposed to be four tons became 1.6 tons. So that was a save in the material. The material price, and I agree with you with one thing here, there, it's very important. The price is, is, is in the material recipe. And I think we excel at that. Because we've been working at it, on focusing on it more than building the bigger machine or the bigger whatever, and roll it out and then tell, Scratch your head, oh, the economy, the economics of this uh, is not really feasible. And so, so, from our point of view, that problem is resolved. However, I agree with you to convince legislators, and, you know, to get the growth compliant. Is the sand in Australia good for concrete? Yes. 
Yeah. That's um, very nice. Way, Australia is a continent. Um, well, it's not all dunes. <laughs> you get those in some places. And they're good for around the earth applications. And, At least you don't have to export sand like a lot of people do. Or import. Yeah. Sorry. You don't have to import yeah. sand. So we have plenty of sand around here. Um, That's how you get the cost to 112. Yeah, it's a, it's a lucky company. We have plenty of many things. So uh, which is a good thing to be on Australia. Um, the, 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 going back, so the price or the, um, the issue of the cost, I think can be addressed in the following way. First, the trades you have in each house, uh, we did it down to the uh, to the minute. How much it would take an electrician to come in a signal house and cut and figure out where he's going to do the wiring? Estimates are not very serious because one electrician and two electricians, it's not down to the minute. One might take ten days when one could do it in one day. Well, well I'm telling you, we, we used four in this particular case. You know, we got the, to get the code. No quotation. We got quotations. We didn't really. Uh, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's an indicative thing. Uh, that That's a good strategy. Four point. quotes will give you a pretty good number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's, you can see the difference in the prices. It's just, uh, it's Huge um, difference, so, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get, uh, it depends also on the skill of the person, the, his crew, how he's operating. There is a lot the of other thing is, at least three out of four of them would have had a change order on the job to increase the price 20%, 40%, 60%. Oh, uh, yeah, or their supplier, where they get their deal from. But That's why uh, estimates aren't really meaningful. But it, it gives you an indication. What I can tell you, with 3D printing, when you have all the sockets and all the, everything is figured out in the design stage mm -hmm. by the architect, and the building or the builder has to execute that file, that STL file, and then everyone else comes and know where to do the thing. You can really run an efficient operation yeah. and achieve the 100 or 200 or 500 houses. Um, and um, we, we, we intend to do that in a um, company Southeast Asia, in the Philippines, where nothing should be figured out on the field. And uh, we've, we've, we've met a lot of, the, the, then realized there is a lot of folks out there in uh, you know, modern methods of construction uh, sphere who have come up with solutions. You know, um, and uh, I've mentioned uh, uh, a few, but there are a couple of companies out there where their job is to do that sort of thing, uh, to help designers or Although their systems most of the time are there to service for a large order of numbers uh, of units or you know these small buildings, but it's, it's it is there to, to to work the economics of the issue. It is there. It is feasible. It is possible. That's now the problem. Good. Most of the folks who do this and have this are the folks who actually manage to make money out of the construction there. And they are the big guys. I think what a technology like 3D printing can do is bring it to the small business that ability to at least have a, have better margins, have faster delivery times of finishing the projects. And also then that 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 trickles down to another that solves another issue, which is having more resilient houses, having robust builds that can stand for long. Uh, you know what? Even just to confuse human beings after a thousand years, if we don't mess it up and destroy the planet, that why did people do this? You know, leave something for who's coming after. Um, I think that's that that alone is worth it. You know? Uh, history students and of travel. Mm -hmm. so, so I think the economics of the 3D printing is feasible for those who look at it from the right angle. And it has to be, uh, you know, as a 3D printing technology company or automation company, you need to be able to provide a holistic 
or at least open the doors for that kind of holistic approach to the folks who are going to purchase from you, people who are going to adopt this technology, because you want them to succeed. You, know? you don't want them to, you know, become your pain the guinea pig. It's better to do things in the lab and give, just like the Snickers bar, you know, test it first, bring people to taste it, and uh, then. Then you roll out, roll out and you find it's it. funny. I was thinking about that too. Uh, your earlier analogy the machine that makes the Snickers bars, uh, sure. well, they they have the Snickers bar, they want it to be the same Snickers bar every time, and they're happy with the Snickers bar. It's a perfect Snickers bar, they don't want to change it. The 3D printed construction technology needs to be improved, uh, in every way. So, the, the software can improve, the hardware can improve, the materials can improve. <laughs> The permitting can improve. The labor education can improve. So all these things uh, are going to improve together. And like you're working on most of them yourself. And so you're seeing the progress uh, and it's fast, right? It is very fast. Yeah, there is a steep learning curve. You see, as I told you, most of us came up, came from a different backgrounds. Uh, most of us came from an environment that has nothing to do really with construction or whatever. Um, but we believe that it's from the robotics as well, you know, the aspect, uh, we can actually help expedite this, the rollout of this technology responsibly, responsibly. Because if you charge so many folks early on, uh, on a, with a premium on a free or regressive system, yeah, and spread that around the world, you build them a guild, you know, of progressive robotics, a lot of unsatisfied folks. Uh, many of them- Alliance is only as strong as the distance between the, com the competition. They're not, uh, but, but the, the thing is, they're gonna, they're gonna, folks are gonna trust what you say. You're a smart guy. You would do, uh, you know how the robotics, the robot works. You say you can print this in, you know, a very shorter time or whatever. And then they say, oh, it's only three layers on. Uh, uh, well, we have to pay another premium to get trained on this. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, irresponsible actions like that when, uh, uh, hurts the whole industry. There is no reason, in my opinion, for bickering and uh, for petty competition at this stage. Uh, I think this is a time where we all have to act responsibly and watch each other's backs uh, by providing the best, I'm sure the best this technology can provide. Well, I mean, petty or not, there's no real competition because the companies are so far apart. They aren't competing for clients yet. When there's a, when the market's mature, so there, are not many clients. there are not many clients actually. So whoever the wants to- only in their heads. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, sometimes it is in the head, but uh, sometimes the, 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 in each, because it's a new technology, the client's pool is very limited. And that's where the petty competition comes to. But I think everyone who started this, you know, they don't, we all know that you can make a good living out of this, uh, really good living from this technology and from rolling it out. Uh, it's a huge, um, this is an industry we're embarking on, an industry that's one of the biggest in the world, uh, an industry that there is no way that it would die or just disappear because we will always, just like we always want to eat, we always need a shelter. It says all this history. I can uh, see you having a strong alliance with a company like Alquist, their printer agnostic. Uh, you're a printer manufacturer, so... To, to have a close alliance with like Cobot or Seabay or a real direct competitor like that would be a little bit more challenging, I think, in the long term. As, as you said, we don't see the competition at our end. Uh, we think they are uh, they're doing a good thing uh, for, for the, uh, you know, for pushing the, the technology forward. Um, um, I mentioned office because I just saw the video of the nice lady who got into the house and stuff that made me happy man. you know I, I don't know about you but oh like, wow okay that's sort of problem um, 
and, and I think there are a bit philosophical about how this technology could solve even more uh, indirect issues. In my opinion, it could solve corruption in South America and in Africa, or in many countries where officials would steal money to build a house or to buy an apartment. Corruption finds make... other ways to be corrupt, I think. That's very hopeful. <laughs> I, well, I'm, I'm telling you that the, some, uh, that's the sort of the uh, thinking process that I'm looking at. Um, It'll solve some corruption because construction, there's a lot of con uh, construction corruption. So if you have a machine that can't lie, uh, that changes a lot of things. You can't cheat in the mixture. If you cheat, it wouldn't work. That also, you know, another quality uh, component. Mm -hmm. um, so um, again, we're not only a manufacturer of the printer and or of that. Um, we're also engaged in our of R and D with the material. Oh yeah, and, and and that's where I can tell you why how we got to that price point per cubic meter. Uh, it took us a long time to get it there. Uh, you know, there are huge companies that you know they've been in cement for how long or whatever. You know, um, but so, so, so some of these folks have uh, the 50s mentality. All the certain people, certain shapes and looks can engage in this kind of thing. Well, you know, well, when time has passed on, things are different. Um, so they've been trying, you know, they're not there yet, some of them. Um, going from there, we need to think about the automation and construction as a general concept, um, down to the exoskeleton, which two of my colleagues have done the work told PhD thesis on, or one in a passive uh, exoskeleton, uh, another one in an active one um, with hypothesis and stuff. Uh, we believe that uh, it's it's more to do with. Um, not only the, the machine, but also then to get to that level of providing the whole house packing. Mm -hmm. that, that's why we launched the geodes. What would be the next thing to tackle after the wall system? Um, with, the, with the geode, uh, the 3D printing, I am not sure um, but where we can go from there, but to automate the whole process. You know, whether it's the roof system, there are a lot of products out there. Why we launched the geo? Because we got a lot of calls from folks who have money and they say, okay, listen, you know what, Anu? Um, right, um, I buy your cell pitch, you know, that uh, this paper wall, whatever, stick build is this. Well, what do I do, man? <laughs> who do I call? You know, an architect to do this. Or, uh, and, and after getting a lot of that kind of similar request, uh, and it's not just one age group, it's multiple uh, demographics that have the same problem. They have a certain amount of money, they want to build, they have the land. They don't want to get into the debt cycle. They want to travel, see the world. They want to do other things. And if this is an option, um, so we came up with the geo, which is uh, um, a concept for a house that we worked all its details from A to Z, from the mechanical system to the electrical system to down to where you can put, you know, well, where are the cupboards and where are all these things. And I think that an offering like that can help in the awareness rather than become a major activity or a major effort for us. That helps with the awareness of what you can do with this technology. If you don't have the buck to hire an architect or an exotic architect, or your architect is not keen to learn about, although I think most architects use Revit and use, uh, you know, how to generate this their file. But let's say a new structural, you don't know where to find a structural engineer and you don't know how to approve it through council. So we came up with all these kind of three options. Most of the folks would be either for granite flat or one guest room a small apartment uh, thing, or et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we think the next level is, which we incorporate in the geode a little bit, but is that how you can extend your house further. 
without uh, having so much trouble. You know, you can add, you can print something more today. And, uh, I think that's that's the uh, as your family grow as your so. But I don't like to dwell too much in the building process as a package from A to Z because this is going to be a new venture for us. Certainly. And I think it's very lucrative as well. We know that. But as a rule of thumb, we think it's not responsible also to sell people a picture and let them build the house, the first house or whatever. So just a small train course. That's really smart. We will build it with you to also to keep that nice layer so that uh, you will see the layers that we did in the Philippines or that we're doing in Malaysia or that we're doing in Oman or, or Montevideo, uh, which is the capital of Uruguay, um, will be identical. The same tolerance for things. And that's quality. So that's the, I think that's the web where we set ourselves apart. Um, being vertically integrated is a good thing when it comes to this game. Uh, I feel sorry for uh, my colleagues who have to buy the robots from one area, do the thing from, from another stuff. Um, I've seen one of them in the ancient area, they're trying to get into the gameplay game. But at this stage, you understand that so not every human being the majority of human beings don't want to build statues of themselves. People just need to live in a normal dwelling. And, uh, and it comes to the issue of over automating to uh, It could be feasible if you are in a university to have an articulated robotic arm that has been lying around there to transform it into a 3D printer. But uh, to push it out there, uh, trust me, people will come around. So let's go back to the printer. The question I asked earlier about the differences between the small system and the big system. Uh, the small system is on tracks. Is the bigger system on tracks as well? The bigger system, well, we are, if we were to put it as a totally autonomous off-road vehicle, that will increase its cost significantly. Mm -hmm. That's due to just using all these different technologies together, which is there. We have... Uh, self-driving vehicles to handle people and goods and you know the accuracy that it can get to. And in and, and, and that, and that regard, it's actually better than the accuracy of many of, our, of the 3D printing systems that you see out there. We know that that is there, but it costs. So it depends on you. You want it as a total off-road vehicle that is autonomous and aware of its surrounding. We got a customer who's interested in the space game and etc. who's invested in that. He wants that. And then the bigger printer also, you can have it with just normal rails where all you have to do is just put the rails and then it acts like a forklift. Then by the surface. It's more complex than a cylindrical robot. A cylindrical robot is for someone who doesn't want to do his vibration uh, analyses, uh, especially where the guy was showing, he was showing the whole industry. Uh, I don't think he really uh, at the top of the robotics game. Um, we have a, 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 a crane that can go back and forth. And we know for a fact that uh, we're sharing with you some exclusive videos. See, uh, there are no vibrations. Uh, it's been dampened. It's been designed properly. The challenges between the big and the small, of course, working the big job is more significant, more uh, time consuming, uh, because there are a lot of more subsystems. But our biggest problem is we made it to go up to six meters high, and then our warehouse is not that high. So that, that became, that was one challenge. Uh, to take it out before it's totally ready and um, get it up all the way high and then put it down and put it inside. What about your mixer pump system? Did that change from the small printer to the big printer? So, well, of course, of course. So, for the uh, mixed pump system, um, there are a number of options. Um, 
that is the fan faction that has been out there since 2000, since 1999, I think. 2003, 4, 5, 6, we've seen it in multiple countries around the world. Yeah, I haven't seen it successfully implemented on any 3D printed houses yet. Um, okay, um, uh, well, but with that, with that particular system, uh, we're in talks with um, multiple suppliers to do that uh, sort of system. Um, automating that process is a challenge, as everyone, I think, will uh, share with you. Um, but there is no easy way to, to put it, but we have the, 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 the other system is rather than having the silo, I think we can use the 25 beds, it will be more physically taxing. Uh, but there is also another way to automate it to have the bags on a conveyor that cuts them automatically, We're working on that. Uh, <laughs> just to put the pallets and then they go. Uh, it's a well known idea. Many factories use it, especially when folks who go in, uh, in the food industry, the folks who do the dough, the uh, muffins, and stuff. I saw it in a muffin factory. I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. I have the bags. <laughs> I know how to. Uh, that's that comes down cheaper because then you don't have to. You don't need that extra forklift on the side. That sounds that's, kind of like a lab solution, though. It does that work scale that's on site. Uh, on on site, I would say we we're gonna go with the uh, big super sack uh, and the uh, you know if you want the silo uh, and uh, then the pump and the. Uh, the mixer of the pump. Um, but the plant pattern is something we, uh, we work, we're working on. Uh, we believe it has a huge potential. Yeah. Uh, but then there's a problem. That system, you still need silos over there to, to feed into the plant pattern. So it's just a matter of uh, eliminating what part of the supply chain, which is patching, pre patching, or patching all sides. The ingredient ratios uh, getting into the mixer is really, I guess, what you want to automate. And it, it's something complex because the environmental factors change. So you need to change the ingredients mid-print potentially. And then Stefan needs to figure out a way to figure out the strength of the concrete when you're changing the mix in the middle of the print. I don't think it's really the ingredients. I think it's the additives, mm -hmm. ratios. Uh, the, the, like next design is a whole. It, it, it's, uh, it's even it's, water it's, it's content has changed. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a whole science in its own. The That's an ingredient. Design, yeah, when you design your mix properly and uh, you design it to, uh, and then you anticipate beforehand. It's, it's from here. It's a logistic thing, and uh, just you know, a good practice in mix design. What you're saying so sounds easy, but it's very very hard on site, especially okay, on know, a new site. Trust me, I know I, uh, we talked about a lot of poses and historic content. I think half a dozen pumps. So I know, I know how hard it is. Um, on site, on new sites. On, on, on site or off site. Um, off site, the, the, it's, it's the parameters. It's your humidity, it's the temperature. Uh, if, if, you know, if it's uh, if you if you resolve all these issues and you have your proper ratios, I wouldn't make a claim that you can do it in any longitude rapid to without being able to back it up. You can't do that. <laughs> no way. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you from different continents how the quality of the mix is the same. Well, I'm sure all of them did a lot of trial and error to get it there. It's not the first print doesn't work in a new area. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you have to we're, we're, a lot of effort in. It's not like you can just ship them the print with the material in a brand new place you never printed before. Yeah, we'll, actually, we'll be there. That's, that's yeah, you'll have to be there. It's a lot of effort. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's effort and it requires very specialized knowledge. That's true. You need to, you need to know what you're doing when it comes to uh, when you see certain things in the mix, how it's acting, how it's reacting, what uh, you need. Uh, Specialized know how. It might be easy for you, but it's not easy. <laughs> no, no, it's, well, I, I'm not saying this is, uh, and here's the thing. Um, I think you, you, you hit on a very good point here. 
many folks have made this look like fun. Just bring the robot and a pump. And, you know, you got the industry, you can go. That, that, that is not the case. Uh, you, you, you need a proper structure and uh, we'll spend a significant amount of time designing the mix, understanding the parameters that affects the mix, understanding how it reacts, how it's uh, to different kind of uh, elements or um, conditions. Uh, and uh, that, that, that takes time, it takes effort, it takes hour and And it is exactly what we've done. Therefore, right now, it feels sweet to say, oh, yeah, that's not a problem. But I, I promise that this is really, really hard work. Uh, and uh, hard work for folks for specialized and trained eyes, I'm talking. I'm not talking about folks who are just. Uh, so I, I, I took my hat for anyone who's doing this. Um, so they probably, I, I'm still keeping at it, I'm still enjoying it. I mean, because it's not, it's not uh, for, for the kind of you know, the, the, you know, the, When everything clogs and everything doesn't work and the $10,000 down, down the drain, that is, uh, that is not for the kind of mm -hmm. And then you keep and you try and do it again uh, with the risk of losing another uh, thing that until you get your um, so yeah it requires certain amounts of knowledge know-how and how that grit to be persistent and then yeah uh, I think but from our perspective um, I understand what you're saying when you're saying when you go to a new place it's not going to work on the first time now, for me, I know that is the case if I sell the printer and I give the formula. But uh, that is the irresponsible. It's a cash grab. And it is not acceptable in many other, you know, I can tell you, bakers cannot do that. You can go to a baker and he'll give you, okay, here is the flour, here is the thing, you do it like this and become a dough and you go cook your, your thing. No, uh, there is that muscle memory. And therefore, we acknowledge that and appreciate it. And that's why the first house is on us. The first house is on us. If you buy from Luton, the first house is on us. That is, and not everyone who just buy a printer will automatically will get that certificate of operation. We've seen a couple of companies do this practice, and we think it's a very good practice to develop a curriculum. Uh, our curriculum is for folks who, work, who will buy and who will really operate this technology for the following reasons is that we need them to be successful with their prints after that first print, after they're with us, to see all the problems, to see all the stresses that happens during the print, the frustrations, and how to deal with them until they come and they say, oh, okay, I know what happened here. And that takes time. So I think the training part should not be taken lightly. That's why I, I digress. I don't know where we're we'll, we'll out there. <laughs> no, I agree. That's all very good. Uh, very important. We're still just talking about printers. This is all good stuff. There's no set curriculum for the podcast. So anything, uh, yeah. it's all interesting. Yeah. But the uh, we we're talking about some of the differences between the bigger printer, smaller printer, and I'm wondering, did you change the hose management system? Uh, the hose management system, uh, it depends on what which hose we're talking about. So, and um, so we have, as you can see, we have from the one by one, and then the two by two, and then uh, one that is about three by four, and then the six by two. 12 uh, meters. Now, the two by two and the one by one, we were able to, you know, publicize them. Uh, the six by 12 will be publicized soon, both the three by four, because the customer is kind of shy, and I appreciate that. Uh, or at least until his time come, they want to feature themselves by themselves, and they're happy with that. 
the, 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 the point here is the management system of the hose for the bigger printer is done through the energy chain, like many other countries. With the smaller one, there is it's a small hose. And we don't anticipate folks to, if you will, use it for really huge projects. So uh, it can just lie on one of the uh, sides of the printer, and that works fine. Yeah, it won't hurt anybody. It won't hurt, hurt anybody. And uh, it's highly unlikely to clog or to have all the problems you have with bigger printers. Really? Uh, but, um, well, here's the thing, because it's a small quantity to use it. Mm -hmm. It's harder to print. So less time. Print. Less time and uh, buildability is a challenge. So um, the, the, the same mixture, when you tweak to the bit, to a bigger printer, you can go to 2.4 meters in one go. But with a smaller one, uh, good luck getting to one frame. So There's so, so little well, time between layers, it can't really cure very quickly. And if it doesn't cure quickly, uh, you know, the stress is going to get more failures. That's why I think it would clog more, though, because you use more accelerants, so the hose might get uh, more reaction. Uh, not necessarily. Um, the hose is smaller. The pump is smaller. And, and, and it, you can remedy the situation quicker. Than with a bigger system, starting with a bigger system. Yeah. And here's my philosophy with the training course that we give to our customers. We start them with a smaller printer, which is almost torture, but they realize the ability and the know how that they've developed. They are dealing with that kind of very limited constraints because it's extremely constrained uh, equation when you're printing a small size. When you say almost torture, it's much harder printing smaller than larger. Way harder, way harder, um, and and that's what made us come up with this. Uh, but, but it paid off because our mixture, we know it's at the pinnacle right now. So we know it's a fact because if you develop the buildability there, with, and yeah, you, you you have to develop your buildability without accelerant. That's a tough one, I know. But for folks who are pushing into this, we might get there someday. Um, to, 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 to work your, because at, at the end of the day, it's your mixed design, as I told you, it's a scientific issue. Uh, if your mixed design is not, uh, is not done with know-how about how concrete works, as a chemical reaction, this hydration, how it works, how the calcite, the, calci uh, the matrix forms, the interlayer bonding, all the habit, it's, a, it's the art of making an artificial rock. That's what smart paper is. Uh, we've been doing this very easy. Put it in a form work, vibrate it, and oh yeah, you got it. But now you're, you're, you're shaping it in a very nimble manner. So once you work that and you have a proper mixed design, because the additives can only take you so long. The additives are limited to what they can do. No matter how, how advanced is the additive, if you don't work the issue properly, and your ratios and why you have those ratios and how you anticipate them. Because concrete in Canada, you get minus zero. That, that requires you to design your mix in a certain way. And then so there are some additives that help you with this. And then concreting down all the way in Arizona or, or in Texas is a whole different game. Because also the ratios are mixed is different. And then you have additives that can fill the gap, basically, you know, to make the whole, the whole, uh, as carpenters say, to make the whole door plumb. You know? If you don't have a, a good carpenter from the beginning who knows how to take the, 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 way the, the measurements and knows how to put the, 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 the the door and the hinges and so, etc. Uh, it, it doesn't matter how nice is the mold, you know. The, 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 and that's what the additive is. You need to have a nice design, person. So the home that you're printing now is that being printed 
on site or off site? The, uh, so we finished the first uh, phase of our, uh, this is, uh, as I said, this is a new venture for us to start building ourselves with the customers. So we got a customer who bought a printer, we do one. I said, okay, can we see what it can do? Because they were not happy with the head uh, Okay, you know what? It's like a big room, done things and we want something with a bathroom, with inner, well, inside walls, outside walls, and they wanted walls that are half meter wide. Wow. Um, for thermal, you know, for better thermal efficiency. Can you do that? I was like, okay. Where are they printing? In Alaska? No, in Alice Springs, in the middle of Australia. It really gets hot there. So oh, for heat insulation. Wow. It's the driest place on Earth. Uh, I think uh, that the only other place is like Alice Springs is in, uh, in California. That's why it's a big uh, airplane radio. There's no moist. Things doesn't rust around in Alice Springs. And it heats really, really bad. So uh, if you have the, the normal housing, you, you might as well be living there on the tin can. So a meter and a half wall, you can't ship something that big. That'll be way too large to transport. You have to do it on site. Bet much better that way. Yes, yes. Exactly. Nice. exactly. And um, so we built the, these nice walls, uh, which we will share with you. And with a bathroom, shower, uh, inner walls uh, and uh, that dryness makes it very hard to print. Again, you mentioned it's super dry. That adds to the challenging of printing. Did you use a tent? Uh, not at this stage. Uh, this stage, we the first prototype that we built is uh, in Melbourne, beginning of. However, we have done. Or testing, uh, I agree with you. Being that the area being so dry has its, its challenge, uh, but uh, it's nothing we didn't anticipate. Mm -hmm. we, we designed our thing for that particular vicinity for that location. Yeah, great. Um, it has its challenges, but it's nothing that uh, you can't circumvent. Uh, it's a very hard place. You don't want to close your pump bed. All, all the issues that could, uh, it's literally in the middle of the continent. Um, so uh, the, 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 that's um, that's the second house we printed. It's also the first in Australia. Uh, and uh, it just showed that I was so happy with that project because we have a half a meter wall. I've never seen that really. It looks like a bridge burger or almost. But it provides that kind of, um, if you will, thermal efficiency for the folks inside the house and they run the aircon. It has that strength. Uh, and um, also, um, uh, at the same time, it has the customization ability to you know, have certain shades that are inspired by indigenous arts. And so yeah, so that's that's the house. And if it makes you any happier, you know, we did it while the roller shutter was open, you know? So it's not totally inside the body. Mm. So, so uh, there, 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 there was some uh, elements, effects there. Yeah, I guess you, had, you did a lot of the print at night probably. Um, yeah, the night will be more appropriate for that. Absolutely. Stay out also, of the bear in mind, it's, it's, it's not really the night, if you know, because it, it could get to minus zero, minus one, minus... Wow. And also, you know, concreting under those conditions are different. Uh, but then again, we're not just normal concreting. Uh, this is specifically designed. So when I hear concreters, sometimes they come, especially the guy who does the slab. He would like to tell you, hey, I know this. I've been doing this for a long time. And the fact of the matter is, no, he's just been copying certain practices for a long time. Uh, it's, it's, it's just like someone has been using office work for how long, and uh, 
he knows a little bit of uh, HTML or how to make a, a website, doesn't mean doesn't mean they understand and they can write an AI code for reinforced learning and compare it to a deep learning and it's a whole different thing. Comically, yeah, it goes the other way too. There's guys who are AI geniuses who don't know how to code a website in HTML. That is true. That is true. That is true. Um, but probably the, less the, of those. But the key is the th key thing is it's not the same. It's different. Uh, I respect how long you've been concreting. Thank you. Respect for that. But this is a different issue. So it requires different thinking. Uh, you start from a different point. Is it challenging getting the people who are stuck in their ways of traditional concrete work to adjust to new paradigms of printed concrete? I don't think it's challenging because, you see, the truth and in fact have a way of proving, you know, uh, proving themselves. Uh, we can, uh, I know people who still hate to use uh, smartphones. <laughs> still? There are, you know, there are companies that still that used to dominate this industry of phones, and they kept to, they lost the game. Even when they came up with a smartphone, they were too way behind. They didn't have the, uh, they, they still wanted to do their own proprietary software, and everyone, all the ads, all the stuff. The last happened. person I knew without a smartphone got one three years ago. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm hard. Criminal, criminals, they, 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 they don't use a smartphone, they think, they, Cannot be trapped or something. Eventually, yeah. uh, there's no choice. But there are folks, uh, you know, it's for me, the way I see it, um, with the telephone, there used to be a whole room full of people, you know, doing the exchange of the lines. And that was changed by a simple analog circuit with a duct tape phone. And they became obsolete. Uh, there are folks who are always, for disruption. Yeah, there, yeah, there, 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 there are folks. Uh, but before we scare folks and talk about disruption, disruption, it sounds like uh, greedy uh, individuals who just manage for a good buck. Uh, I think it's it's worthwhile to spend the time to show people the benefits. And uh, this will create more jobs, which is the which is true. You know, you still you need to a more favorable job, high paying job. I never heard someone associate disruption with greed before. Um, I don't know. Um, for me, I I I don't want to cause anyone to disrupt anyone's money. I'm of the belief like that if you create a. Uh, solutions you're adding value and you capture some of that value so you create mm -hmm. Lloyd 10 you decrease the cost ultimately one day and you get yeah, a portion well, of that cost returned you can reinvest it or you can spend it on yourself your family however you like okay I didn't hear you. I lost it. you from providing that value through Lloyd 10 value will be returned to you and then you can use that money that you make to reinvest in more technology you can spend it on yourself you can spend it on your family and uh whatever the use is it's not about greed because anybody who gave you money it was a consensual agreement you sold them a product that they wanted to pay for no no, no i'm not talking about that i, I, I think uh, I, i'm talking about this technology causing people to lose jobs mm. That is that is eventual, but we can do something about it to make it to cushion that effect and to make sure that we have more good um, high paying job. That, 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 that the result of this technology that has fallen out is to cause more to substitute an industry that is complaining from lack of skilled work or uh, workforce, substitute that issue by introducing technology. And bringing uh, the new folks who, with real skills, that actually has impact, and they also have good living as they go. Yeah, I mean that's a non-problem, especially right now. What's the unemployment rate in Australia? I have no idea. Probably low in America. It's the lowest it's like ever been, basically. Yeah. Okay. So people aren't. Uh, if more people were unemployed, I think there would be people would be more upset potentially, even though it's. 
misplaced anger, in my opinion, because like you're saying, the jobs aren't erased. They're replaced with jobs that change the work from your hands to your mind uh, or over uh, there. People could refuse to uh, upskill and they'll be left behind. And they have the choice to be that grumpy man who's, or woman or whatever. I disagree. I think I don't think anyone will be left behind because there's such a shortage of skilled labor. And the homes that are built with stick frames are going to need to be repaired. Like what yeah. you're saying. What about folks who would refuse to upskill or to stick to their old ways or to insist that, ah, oh, nah, this is nothing, or, you know, uh, they're going to be left behind. They'll and, be fine. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I'm, I'm, I hope no one gets to be left behind for everyone upskills. Uh, this is good for everyone. Good for the consumer, me. When I want to buy a house, which is the most significant purchase of my life, I want to have a say in it. Yeah. I don't want just a square and a rectangle and some bureaucrat somewhere telling me what I can do and what I cannot do because of his, you know, old way of thinking, or he's not happy about his job and doesn't want to explore new things. Yeah, and this change will be decades. Maybe it's 30 years from now, but eventually the handmade home will just be like a, it'll be an interesting quirk that it's handmade. Frankly, I'm more optimistic than that. I think we might see this very soon. Wow, Um, that'd be cool for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, listen, hey, if you want to build a house, call this you know? We, <laughs> we can set you up, you know? The house I'm very room. patient. So I, I think that construction is going to be transforming for the rest of my life, and I'm eager to uh, see all the innovation agree, along the way. I agree with you. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an industry that there is a lot of room to automate. There's, and by the way, every new company I see, I get happy. I was like, oh, okay, so I was not the only one who was pissed off with this company. You know? Okay, others are thinking about this. But the way I look at it, with how people can get aware quickly of things um, and new methods and new ways, the world has changed. This will be good for everyone. For me, as a, again, back uh, because I digress a little bit, it's the freedom. How you want your house is freedom, freedom, freedom. I can't stress that enough. You know, it's your house. What all your life you say, you got to have a say how it should look. You shouldn't be putting pin down to a number of options on what you can afford. No, still, with whatever you can afford, you can have a single choice. And I'm talking about the majority. I'm not talking about the upper middle class or whatever all other classes are out there. Uh, that's what I think about. I think about the very simple man out there. Uh, rather than us spending billions on mental health or whatever health and this, I think when everyone have a nice house and have less uncertainty in their lives, and if you use technology as an instrument for economic opportunity, Rather than just, you know, uh, every now and then before certain elections or whatever, we push, oh, we're investing in this infrastructure, we're investing in that. No, we really think about sustainable solutions for this economic problem. Then we will have happier people, more creative folks. Uh, and trust me, when you put people in a good uh, situation in general, where there are less uncertainty, uh, we get to see the best of humanity. Yeah? But when everyone is under stress, everyone has to run from A to B and just to figure out how to, to just to do the basics. Just to have it going over the head. You know, I ain't got to be better than this. 400 years ago, we didn't have all these concepts. At least according to some of the books I've been reading, but it's a beautiful outside. picture. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a beautiful picture you paint. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I got to dream a little bit, you know? So. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's, that's I think, uh, rather than with, with this technology, with housing, 
banking gets feasible, I think we provide a solution, an opportunity, a window of hope for many, rather than just focusing on treating the symptoms of, you know, all the stresses that life has right now, and then just complaining about the problem. Someone needs to do something. Right? So that's how I see this technology going forward. If somebody wants to get involved, get in touch with you, do a project, buy a printer, what's the best way for them to reach you to facilitate that? I'll send an email to info at luton.com, luton3d.com, um, or just approach me directly on uh, LinkedIn. We supply the technology, we train, and we will build the first house with you. And uh, we, we, we know that you will get the same quality that you see in the videos of the uh, we Uh Printing houses, if you're in another continent and we don't have a printer there, um, just wait a little bit. We'll get there. We'll, we'll build your house there. Um, you know, and I'm also, I, I want people to understand that at this stage, of our company life, uh, it's harder for us to take on an individual house here or there um, because of, you know, physical constraints. Uh, the, the, the world is so not total. We don't have full mobility yet to travel and stuff like that. Um, also, uh, we're a business, we're not a charity. So um, for other nice people who ask us to help them build their printer, um, for free, uh, well, that is not feasible for us. Now we have to make a living as well. Um, it's, uh, it's good enough that we try to really push the price and the risk of a new investment as low as possible for everyone. And um, I, hope, I hope people can see, you know, can see that as well. Um, yeah, contact us through the website, LinkedIn page. Uh, or whatever, uh, I'm a very down to earth, easy person to talk to. So, how is it? Yeah, I mean, I think the the idea that there's anything greedy about startups is uh, is awful. You're putting in so much work and time and effort right now into like uh, the, the development in the early stages. And uh, the only way it's going to work is if it helps a lot of other people. If you can't help a ton of other people, the startup won't work. So that's just, uh, it's not greedy at all. It's a great thing that I don't think it needs any justification or explanation. No, no, no. I'm, 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 but for me, um, I really, I, I understand what you're saying. And I agree. You don't have to make a living again. But... Not everybody operates in, a, in that way. Some people, uh, some people aren't but, providing so much value, but those companies don't last. Yeah, but you get you get you get to think about people, how you're impacting people's lives. Uh, and uh, I personally, I think this is a value. We think uh, it takes kind of our time at Luton. Uh, uh, we're a little bit idealistic, but listen, man, you, you got to you got to have some ideas. One point, at some point, where it starts. Uh, yeah, um, we understand that you need to make a lot of. Um, impact and help a lot of folks. And that's what we're working towards. That's what we're equipping a lot of building companies uh, with you know, this technology. Um, well, I love watching your progress. And so far, you've delivered on most of the crazy things you said you were going to do uh, a couple years ago. Uh, yeah. The progress is fast. It's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're dedicated. But at the same time, we want folks to feel like, okay, we're special because it's not just about, oh, this company has raised this amount of money, they're going to do this. Huh? No, no, we're really thinking long term for humanity. We come from different backgrounds, and we believe we can solve a major problem for human beings with pioneering this technology. And uh, therefore, the thought of being greedy or feeling guilty a little bit comes every now and then. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, I'm a teddy bear. What can I say? You know? 
<laughs> if, if, you, if you couldn't believe it. But um, that's that's that is something that I want to mind that um, we don't want folks to be scared of this technology. We don't want folks intimidated. And we cannot emphasize that enough. Um, people can train, can upskill. And this is good for your health, for your body. Uh, the time where you can work in a, you know, a, a body taxing job, all of these jobs are, gonna, are going to an end. And this will come, I don't know, I anticipate in the next 10 years, we're going to see uh, more of the, uh, the rollout of automation in many aspects of life. But mm -hmm. look even right now, compare your life to your past life, grandpa's life. How much automation do you have in your daily life? There's a lot of things that I don't have to <laughs> do as a, so this is coming. So that's why we were saying we're not, yeah, of course, we're going to make money. We're I mean, even from but, my childhood, the amount that's been automated from when I was a kid, uh, now that we have iPhones and Uber, uh, yeah. it's it's been ridiculous in my short lifetime to see. So even, I'm even sure it'll be games, faster. You know? Even video games. You know, I was looking at one of the, my friend's son, uh, and then, uh, have the headphone and playing the video game and stuff and all with all his friends and so on. I was like, oh what happened? You know, we used to go and to one of our houses and we all play a video game together. There was some movement in there, you know. You can't all be just sitting at home and I'll, I'm talking to my friends. So it's a huge difference. Um, so yeah, yeah, there is uh, a, a lot that happened. Um not all positive, but we, we, we can see anyone who tried to Who's to decide what's positive or negative? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot of people it. But um, in my opinion, we've seen anyone who resists technology for because of fear, because of whatever. Left behind. Um, then, 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 I'm not going to say left behind. You, you get me in trouble last time for that. I'm going to say they're not the winning party. We don't hear about that. They're anecdotes. That's what it is. So, um, and I, I'm sure there'll be more technologies, whether it's in the accessory of the 3D printing, whether it's in the finishes, whether in the certain things. Um, we've seen how we have managed to make the finish, but to, you know, that it's a self traveling thing. And that actually has a lot of benefits also for consistency of the thing that it cures, et cetera. Um, and uh, I, I think that's that's the way forward for the coming couple of years because we don't believe this is a trend. We've asked many of our friends and we've read some uh, literature on research. We, 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 I'm, I'm not going to sign it because I'm not sure about it, but we take it as an estimate that about 80% of millennials would like a 3D printer in the house. It's so cool right now. Um, and when things get this cool, very fast, but also I mean, don't fade after a while, they keep growing. You know, you know, this is not really a print. This is here to stay. But come on, we have a specialized journalist for 3D printing, you know? You don't get to that level if this was a giant uh, trend or a trend like all the blocks that can match with each other or whatever all these other things that doesn't really act, uh, uh, act on the fundamental of the problem, which is to make it feasible, less labor work, more accurate builds, other than the lottery that we have right now with you and your contractor and the human eye. Um, so that's why they were trends, you know that. Because they didn't solve anything in the chain of supply. They didn't, reduce the amount of trades. They didn't reduce, they didn't give you that freedom. The free form, you know, free form work uh, is, is a big deal. Um, I, I would equate it like similar to the guy who invented this, you know, thing on the mug, the, the, the mug handle. It's a big mm. deal, you know? It's a very simple thing, but it's a big deal. Um, this kind of, uh, 
things are pivotal. I, I don't know. I, I never saw a pattern for a mug handle or a cup handle. But I think it's doing, ancient pottery from all corners of the world. Yeah, probably. But but trust me, we never learn from each other. Someone saw it, and probably IB was not IB was not a big deal at the time. You know, um, it still isn't. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's true. That's true. In some in some parts of the world, at least. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's not there. But the point is, this is there, and we're gonna see it going and improving as we go. We welcome the competition. I think it's a, it's a healthy thing. Uh, however, we think folks need to take the time in delivering the product to make sure. To understand and to stop being selfish and think about how much food but you can make, and think about the larger industry, the larger thing that you're part of right now. You know? um, I can, I, I, we can all play stupid, and I can call you know, right now from the list. I have the map behind me, a couple of countries, and yeah, we're going to sell you, we're going to do this. They started, and a couple of press releases, and yeah, with, with the most selling them. That is not the smartest way. That is not the way to go forward. I think the way to go forward is to show that towards the awareness battle properly, people already like this technology. Uh, and it could go as simple as this. If people see cracked walls or things doesn't go well, or because someone spent all his life savings, you know, because you have a smooth guy with a smooth pitch, you know, sales pitch, Spend his life savings to buy your printer, and it costs so much to operate. And he built something less than standard, and he's false because he needs to make ends meet. He can't go bankrupt in this thing. This could be bad for every one of us. The form of so, you know, false that. Uh, it will be a uh, media printer, a bonanza, we will all pay for it. So, this is a huge market. Everyone can make a good buck out of it. So let us all cool down, have Snickers, have Kit Kat, and drink Coke Zero. That makes it kind of healthy, you know? Are so, you sponsored by Mars Bars? No, 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 no. But um, <laughs> uh, that's such a good example, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, and I have many other products in the food industry in general. Um, I think um, uh, I, I should actually, you know, uh, promote the Tim Tams, which is uh, an Australian, uh, you know, dessert. I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, it's called Tim Tam. You can search it very quickly. Once you come here, uh, we will um, have some Tim Tams. I'll get you some Tim Tams. All right. So I'll uh, be there. It'll probably be late 2023. Okay, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna welcome you here and uh show you around some. Uh, I'm sure, but till then, we would have done a lot of things. Uh, still progressing, uh, still learning. Uh, the poor, the poor man is a man who's not learning something new, in my opinion, every day. Yeah, it's fun. Is this your first entrepreneurial venture? Um, uh, well, I've been dabbling. Nothing really before. Um, it was something to do with apps uh, that uh, you know does something back in 2008, 2009, to sure. then another try attempt in 2010. Um, and then, yeah, the university working here and there for engineering companies. So there is a bit of experience with uh, what I mean, not totally academic, if you will, but. Uh, or hands on for a long time. And then, yeah, stumbled on this. It solves a big problem for me. Uh, you know, I want special walls in every corner of my house. Uh, and uh, I can build it. And this, so the risk for us, me and my colleagues, was reduced by single uh, agreement amongst us. If this didn't work, we will build our own houses. Probably the day. Who knows, you know, it's working very well. It is to say, it's working very well. 
And yeah, building your own outsource is a big burden that you can take off your shoulder, you know, <laughs> work, work a lifetime. Yeah. Just to win the house at the end of the day. So um, well, we engage with, uh, uh, and yeah, I think engaging with universities is a very good strategy. We encourage all our colleagues to do that. That's your recruitment pool. These are the next ones of the time. They can carry the R&D expense. Yeah, there is that, but also they they can actually think about because after a while we'll be in this for too long. We will be the old guys in our system to move it. So we need we need fresh blood. We need to we need to work on that area. Yeah. That's it's that's my both sides too, because it's great to have the next generation of labor force be educated in this technology. Yes, yes, exactly. And that um, that helps the technology good time when you have a lot of architects who know how this works. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have a problem, you know, when someone calls you and hey, do you know an architect that does that? Why now is a problem? I have to scratch my head and look and go we'll sift through in that vicinity and that region, sift through 20, 30 skeptic art, uh, you know, and then it goes from their questioning my credentials to questioning the whole idea how it's not going to work. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, right um, now you hire somebody yeah. and it's like you're saying we're 3D printing houses. They're like, you're what? We're 3D printing yeah. houses. You have to explain to them. But in the future, it'll be we're 3D printing houses. Students like, yeah, I have my degree in 3D printed materials. Let me help you jump right to it. Yeah, so right now, right now we got we got a lot of uh, questions from folks. So, oh, I've seen that somewhere else. We didn't know we have it here. Um, I got calls from overseas and were also, okay, is it like that? Because I didn't like what I saw. Is it better than that? What do you, uh, folks want to learn about this? Because it sounds like a kind of silly for everything. Uh, so I think, um, again, that takes us back to the, that's the awareness issue. Well, now that we've completed a couple of different circles, is there anything yeah. left unsaid? Ah, uh, no, no, I'm good. Thank you again, Gary, for this. I hope to see you in Australia soon. Um, and um, you know, we will, uh, we will get. Uh, we've got some of our uh, materials which I shared with you. Yeah, well, I think it'll be time for a new uh, YouTube video about the Lloyd Ten project soon. Maybe when that house is ready to uh, to do have a little public image. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, we'll, we'll send that. Uh, as well, it's going to be the finished house this time, and uh, you know, um, that's one of the taxing things as well. You just want to do walls of people start asking you about roofs and uh, on windows and doors, so uh, that, 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 that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah. Uh, so good to be called the house. So well, I really appreciate much, you taking the time to talk to me today. I think this was a really insightful, uh, insightful discussion, and you took the time to answer some of my challenging questions really thoroughly, which was great. So I think there was a lot of value here and uh, look forward to the next time we speak. Yeah, pleasure on mine. And by the way, your studio looks nice. I'm wondering how did you do the, uh, what does it say? The, uh, the it says behind? automate construction. Automate construction. Okay. Um, if you can give me um, a tip how you did that, because you can see we're in the Newton studio. Um, um, uh, we're improving from the first time when we, we called you from our tiny thing, and uh, it's good to see you with the podcast and the new studio. I wish you all the success in the world. Yeah, thank you. And the LED light, you just uh, it's on Etsy. There's like independent sellers that will custom make the LED strips. It's not super expensive, so that's a cool okay. thing. To check out. Yeah, thanks again. Etsy. All right, thank you. have a good, have a good one. one. Good.